Heart failure is a disorder in which the heart cannot pump blood to the body at a rate that is needed, causing symptoms of shortness of breath and fatigue. To better understand heart failure, we need to review the heart's function. The heart has two phases during each heartbeat, filling, which is diastole, and pumping, which is systole. Systolic function of the heart and resulting cardiac output is governed by four major determinants. These are the contractility of the myocardium, the actual muscle of the heart, the preload of the ventricles, the amount of blood filling the ventricles prior to systole, the afterload applied to the ventricles, essentially what the ventricles have to overcome to push blood out of the heart, and the heart rate. The cardiac output equation can be simplified nicely to stroke volume, which is the amount of blood the ventricles pump out during each heartbeat, multiplied by heart rate, which will give you the cardiac output, where contractility, afterload, and preload all affect stroke volume. Low cardiac output is a main feature in heart failure. The heart fails to pump blood to the rest of the body. When cardiac output is reduced, when the heart fails, a number of adaptations occur, both in the heart and systemically. And these are early adaptations and chronic adaptations. So in the early phases, when stroke volume is reduced, the amount of blood the ventricles pump with each heartbeat, this will actually increase the amount of blood left in the ventricles, in diastole, and this is termed end diastolic volume. Because of this, the ventricular chambers fills with more blood. The muscle fibers lengthen and tighten more, promoting a more forceful contraction to eject excess blood to compensate. And this is the Starling law of the heart, as depicted in this graph. The higher the end diastolic volume, the stronger the force of contraction of the ventricles, and so increasing stroke volume and cardiac output. Reduced cardiac output is also picked up by the baroreceptors, which detect this and will activate the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system will stimulate myocardial contractility, increase heart rate, and venous tone to increase cardiac output. Although these adaptations are designed to increase cardiac output, they may themselves be troublesome. Sympathetic activation, long term, contributes to adverse ventricular remodeling and progressive ventricular dysfunction. So in the chronic phases, with reduced cardiac output, what you also see is reduced renal blood flow, which will activate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. The activation of the RAS system, essentially all of this will contribute to ventricular muscle remodeling and dysfunction. With these chronic adaptations, there is eventual increase in pressures in the ventricles themselves, which then transmits this pressure to the atria, increasing atrial pressure, and as a result, this can lead to pulmonary congestion, and then even peripheral tissue congestion. And so this brings us to the clinical manifestation of heart failure, which is easily classified into right-sided heart failure symptoms and left-sided heart failure symptoms. Left heart failure essentially causes a low cardiac output and can lead to pulmonary congestion. Low cardiac output symptoms and signs include presyncope, fatigue and lethargy, exertional dyspnea with orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, pulmonary congestion or edema causes shortness of breath, a chronic non-productive cough, coarse crackles at the base, and hypoxia. Right side heart failure leads to congestion of peripheral tissue, which manifests as a raised jugular venous pressure, liver congestion, and pitting lower limb edema. Ventricular muscle remodeling and hypertrophy and the subsequent dysfunction is characteristic of heart failure, and there are two broad remodeling processes that occur in heart failure. These are eccentric remodeling 
or concentric remodeling. This also typically results in the pathological classification of heart failure, with eccentric remodeling typically causing heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, and concentric remodeling typically causing heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is the percentage of blood volume ejected by the heart with each beat. So a heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is less than 40%. A heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is greater than 50% of blood ejected by the heart with each heartbeat. So heart failure with reduced ejection fraction is previously known as systolic heart failure because there is a problem with pumping. The ejection fraction is low, less than 40%. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is previously known as diastolic heart failure because there's an issue with heart filling. There's not enough space. The distinction is important because the treatment of these two groups are different. Patients with ejection fraction of 41 to 95% are classified as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, borderline, and so they're usually treated the same. Investigations to order with Patients with heart failure typically include brain natriuretic peptide, which is a substance released by the ventricle myocytes in response to ventricular distension. It is important to check full blood count, electrolyte, urea, creatinine, an ECG to look for an underlying arrhythmia or a recent um, ischemic event. Imaging studies include an echocardiogram, specifically looking at the ejection fraction, left ventricular size, as well as valvular pathology. A chest x-ray typically shows cardiomegaly, pulmonary congestion or edema, and pleural effusion. Other investigations that can be ordered include stress imaging, left heart catheterization, or right heart catheterization. Treatment of heart failure can be divided into non-pharmacological and pharmacological management. Non-pharmacological management is typically shared between the two, and can include fluid restriction, reduced salt intake, stop smoking, stop alcohol drinking, exercise, as well as cardiac rehabilitation. Pharmacological treatment of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction include ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers, beta blockers, spironolactone, fruzamide for symptom management or fluid overload, intresto, which is a combination of sacubitril and valsartan, Evabridine, as well as SGLT2 inhibitors, such as dipagliflozin. Pharmacological treatment of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is slightly different, and this includes ACE inhibitors for hypertension, spironolactone, fruzamide for management of fluid overload, as well as SGLT2 inhibitors. Surgical treatment is important, and this is mainly for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And this includes cardiac resynchronization therapy, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, ventricular-assisted devices, as well as heart or cardiac transplantation. So in summary, we discussed heart failure, which can be broadly divided into heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And it's important to delineate between the two as treatment differs. Thank you.